Welcome to Sword Box Ministries. Mickey continues part 7 of our family series with his second video on jail. Our verse for the day is Psalm 51 3. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Welcome back. A couple days ago we started talking about families affected by loved ones uh, who are sent off to jail, as well as those who are uh, sent to jail or prison. You know, and as we think about jails and prisons and all the families and the communities that are affected by a loved one being there, the last thing many people think about is the Holy Bible. And yet there are many examples of people in the Bible experiencing jail and prison from Joseph all the way to Jesus, uh, Paul, the apostles. Uh, believers are no strangers to being locked up. However, uh, the believers found throughout Scripture being put in prison were innocent. They hadn't done anything. Uh, they were pure persecuted for their faith. Uh, they suffered for doing the will of God. And yet these men didn't waver. They risked everything, even their very lives and their freedom, for the gospel. Uh, yet as innocent men, they weren't bitter, they weren't vengeful, but they trusted in God through the injustices that they suffered. As I said yesterday, there's no quick fixes for families experiencing a loved one who's been sentenced to jail or prison. It's certainly not for the person who's having to go to jail or prison. It's often a long, difficult road with court dates and lawyers, judges, uncomfortable visits inside a correctional facility, short expensive phone calls, uh, there's the financial burden uh, and the complicated laws and the system that's confusing. The vast majority of men and women who do time will one day be free again. Uh, released back into society, often still with many restrictions, many uh, get out of jail and they're on probation or parole, uh, still a difficult thing but better than being in jail. So guilty or innocent, you know, there must be a way for families to cope, uh, to get through this and not allow this to ruin the family, destroy your future and your hope. You know, most of us have read books, we've watched movies about someone who's been falsely accused and convicted and sent off to prison for something they didn't do. What injustice, you know, we think. Yet as I said yesterday, most inmates are there because they broke the law. There are consequences and realities for breaking the law. So the first thing that we need to deal with when we find ourselves in this position is we need to deal with the crime. And the entire family is affected by it and must come to terms with this. Uh, drugs, violence, theft, murder, whatever it is, there should be a time for acknowledging, owning up to, taking responsibility for what we've done. First to God. David wrote in Psalm 51 verse 4, Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found when you speak and blameless when you judge. When we humble ourselves before God, acknowledge and agree with that our sin is against Him and surrender to Him as judge, that is where we need to begin. For family members, they're going to have to deal with this too. Even though they may have had nothing to do with the crime, this is their spouse or their parent, and so it's essentially part of them. We can't pretend that what they did was no big deal or not wrong when it was. So just like the offender, the family members need to come to a point where they acknowledge the offense, as painful as it might be. Secondly, to the ones that we've wronged. When we've wronged someone, we're to go to them if possible, and we're to take responsibility for our actions and even make restitution where there's possibility to do that. And it's not okay to stand in a courtroom and lie about a crime. Don't expect God's help because that's the devil's department. The Bible says that he is the father of lies, John 8:44. God is a just God, and you know, even if you think lying is going to get you off easier or help you in the short term, God sees everything. Uh, acknowledging and owning up to the truth and accepting the consequences now, rather than continuing to go in the wrong direction by lying, is a very wise choice. You know, the Bible says, He who covers his sins will not prosper, but he who forsakes them will have mercy. Proverbs 28:13. It's better to get it right now and take your chances with the courts than to lie now and take your chances with God. So we've stopped, we've acknowledged our wrong or our loved one's offense. We've accepted the facts of what's going on. The blind game isn't something we're playing. We aren't lying or trying to beat the system or get away with something. And as much as it depends on us, we have made peace with God and with those who have been wrong. You know, God forgives. Jesus paid it all. There's no crime he can't forgive, even if others refuse to forgive you. But God always extends his mercy and forgiveness in truth, not based on lies and deception. 
Jesus is the truth, and we can't walk and speak lies and expect his forgiveness and mercy. God is a holy God. You know the psalm we read earlier, Psalm 51, was written by King David after he had committed adultery and murder and had been confronted by God through Nathan the prophet. In verse 6 he wrote, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. David had already sinned. He had already tried to cover it up and move on, and yet God saw everything. God witnessed the adultery. God was right there witnessing the plot to have a man killed, which succeeded. You know, maybe David felt at first that he got away with something, but, you know, he knew it was wrong. In verse 3, he said, My sin is always before me. So the guilt and the shame and the conscience is there, whether we admit it or not. But when confronted with the truth, David did what I'm suggesting, that those who have been charged with something that they know they did and that they know was wrong, a crime or an offense, this is what you do. Verse 3, for I acknowledged my transgressions. That's what David did. That's what set him apart. And I believe one of the reasons he was a man after God's own heart, not because David was perfect, but when David messed up, David took responsibility for it. He acknowledged that he had done wrong, and he acknowledged it before God. If we refuse to acknowledge the truth, you know what? It's still going to be waiting for us somewhere down the road and pop up at a time that we don't expect. Because we need to remember that God sees everything. We're going to talk some more about this. Uh, some more steps to take when we find ourselves in this position so that we're getting on the right road, the, the, the good road that, although may be difficult at first, is certainly going to yield a better profit down the road. God bless you. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Sure,